Jesus, we bless your holy name. We welcome you once more into our midst. Spirit of living God, we adore you. We pray that that which is in the heart of the Father to be done in our lives today, let it be done in Jesus' mighty name. King of glory, we give you all the glory because you deserve all the glory. We honor you with our lives. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us alive to see this month, which is the last month of the year, 2016. If you had a thousand tongues, we can't even thank you enough. We thank you for what you have done from January till now. We give you all the glory for that in Jesus' mighty name. Father, our eyes are unto you. We expect that in the next few minutes you speak to us. You help us. You deliver us. You answer our prayer requests. Father, you admonish us. You transform our lives even for the better. At the end of it all, take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. And let every one of us have a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated as we appreciate the best choir in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we want to talk about the season. And the title of the message is the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas. As you know, Christmas is just uh, seven days away. It's um, next week, Sunday. Uh, and we're having just one service at 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Next week, Sunday, one service, Christmas Day, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. A.M. And as we know that the month of December is usually a festive season, a festive month. And all over the world, Christmas is celebrated. So the question this morning is, what is the true meaning of Christmas? What is the true meaning of Christmas? In December 1903, December 1903, the Wright brothers, they at last successfully got their flying machine off the ground. And they sent a telegraph to their sister Catherine that, well, we were able to at last get this flying machine, the first plane, off the ground. And indeed, we were about 120 feet off the ground and will be home for Christmas. This was December 1903. The sister was so excited and went to the local uh, newspaper man uh, and um, told him and gave him the telegraph. Now the editor of the newspaper said, oh, how nice. The boys will be home for Christmas. But he missed, he missed the great news. The big news was not that the boys would be home for Christmas. That was part of the telegraph. The big news was that man at last could fly. He missed it. And it is also possible in the midst of all the hustle and bustle, the eating and the excitement of, of the season, for anyone to miss the true meaning of Christmas. Why do we celebrate? Why is this month a month of celebration all over the world? And if you look at Christmas, it means a lot of things to many people. To some, it means food. Because <laughs> no one fasts in December. Even the general Russia will not call a fast <laughs> in December because he knows that uh, maybe only his uh, family members would uh, <laughs> obey that, uh, um, that command. 
it, it's just a time of eating and feasting. And just to help us to, um, you know, have a clearer understanding of what we mean by eating and feasting, I, I said they should show us um, an image of, uh, yeah, I know you love that. I wish I could just put uh, a knife and a fork in that and just, my goodness. So for some people, wow, <laughs> that is what they think of. When you say Christmas is all about food, and I can prophesy confidently into your life, that by the time we meet in January, many of you would have added on weight. It's, it's just, it just happens. You know, there was, there was a husband that was telling his wife. He said, look, 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 get in shape. Get in shape. The wife told him, look, round is a shape. So you better get used to <laughs> see me the way I am. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, you know there was somebody that was praying you know, he, had, he just loved food. And on his way to work, he would pass by Mr. Biggs. And every morning he would pack and buy, you know, what you buy, you know, at Mr. Biggs. So this day he said, I will not do it. And he said, the sign he wants from God is that as he's passing by Mr. Biggs, that should not be packing space. So he passed by Mr. Biggs. Lo and behold, there was no packing space. But he circled Mr. Biggs ten times until <laughs> God will have to deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. So for those that love food or think of Christmas in terms of the feasting and the eating and the drinking, I know that there's one song that they'll be singing. It's the top song for this season. And that song goes this way. It says, he brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table. The banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. His banner over me so all they think of is banqueting and it gets so bad that some of them when you ask them what is your name they say banquet amen God will deliver us in Jesus mighty name praise the name of the Lord so for some people it's just all about food just all about food and some can't control themselves you know I, I've shared before the story of a pastor that went to uh, the home of an elderly uh, congregant. He hadn't seen the woman for quite a while. And, um, you know, the woman ushered him in and they were chatting. And on top of the table, they had uh, peanuts. Um, and um, the pastor said, oh, may I? You know, some of us, you know, when you go for movies and things like that, the bag of popcorn, you just keep reaching down and eating and eating. So I said, oh, please, may I? Well, the man said, oh, why not? So he just kept eating it, eating it. And um, lo and behold, after about 20 minutes, he had finished eating all these old woman's peanuts. Of course, he was embarrassed and had to tell her, oops, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't mean to finish the whole thing. The woman said, oh, no, no, don't worry. Ever since I lost my teeth, all I could do was to suck the chocolate, you know, around the, the, the peanuts, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that's the last time that the man would eat peanuts anywhere. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Christmas for us means various things. For some others, it's all about shopping. I mean, yesterday, there was just traffic everywhere. How many of us experienced that traffic? All over. People rushing and all that. And don't even venture near the malls. Or the markets jam-packed, all about shopping. It's, it's madness. But you know, when they get to December, Christmas, I don't know whether you know they think that all those things are going to evaporate. There's just a rush. And I told them to show us, you know, some pictures of, of, of people that are just crazy. And they're crazy rushing, you know. 
You know, it's crazy. That's shop, you know. How wish they had that same zeal to enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord must deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. Praise Almighty Jesus. You know, there was a judge who, because of the season, was feeling good. And um, they brought a prisoner. And he says, yes, young man, and what is your offense? Uh, and the man said, well, my offense is that I was charged for doing my Christmas shopping. Ah, he just said, that cannot be an offense. Charged to court for doing your Christmas shopping? So the judge said, okay, when did you do this? He said, before the shop opened, amen. He was just a thief. <laughs> he was just a thief, amen. So for some people, it's all about shopping, running up and down, looking for something to buy. For some others, it's about Santa Claus or Father Christmas or Papa Noel. And, you know, this brings sweet memories. But see, when you think of Santa Claus, and I said the should show us, for those that don't know Santa Claus, amen, uh, it looks like that, but with a black face, you know. Hallelujah. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Um, you go to shops uh, abroad, and I believe some shops here have started having, you know, Father Christmas. But for some of us, Father Christmas or Santa Claus reminds of or also four stages of our lives. You know, the first time, the first stage is when you used to believe that there is truly a Santa Claus. That he comes, you know, uh, with some reindeers and all that. Then after some time, as you are growing up, the second stage, you stop believing uh, about Santa Claus. Then the third stage, you become Santa Claus. Because you have to become Santa Claus to your children. Um, uh, our dad used to do that you, you never seem to be able to catch when they will come and put the gifts by your feet you know, uh, overnight and of course the fourth stage is when you yourself, you begin to look like a Santa Claus <laughs> God will help us in Jesus mighty name praise the name of the Lord now, but for me and for some of us when I hear Christmas I think of gifts. Oh my God. I love gifts. You know, sitting there looking at these boxes, it's like I should just come there and start tearing the ribbons. You know, but I know that some of you will join me, so I just can't do that. So I told them to show us, you know, gifts. Can you imagine getting home and seeing all that, you know, in your sitting room? Some of us will just go berserk. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So I, I think of gifts. And growing up was fun for us. Because every, every, every Christmas we decorate, my mom would decorate the home and, you know, we'll have, you know, um, uh, a Christmas tree. Uh, and in those days, you use um, a rope and you put your, you know, I, I'm sure of us will know it, you know, you put your cards there, you know, all that. So you enter anybody's home, you know that something really is going on. And usually, the longest night in any child's life is Christmas Eve. Because for a while, you see the boxes by the Christmas tree, but you dare not open it, you know, um, until Christmas morning. Many of us will go there, we touch it and all that, but you can't do anything we just always used to pray that Christmas morning will quickly come. And um, it's always the longest night. Gifts. I love gifts. How many of us love gifts? I love gifts. I, I, just, I just love, especially when they are wrapped. You know, uh, there was um, a, a, a boy, a little boy, that they said that, look, because you've been naughty, Jesus won't give you a gift this season through Santa Claus. So he ran up to mom's room and started writing um, that he will be uh, a good boy. Then he listened to music in his mom's room that says, better watch out, 
Better don't cry. Better be mind. good. I'm Tell telling you now. Santa, Santa Claus is coming to town. town. Some of us will know it. Some will know it. Amen. It says, making a list. Checking Check it, it twice. It's going to find out who's naughty not or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, better watch out. Better be, be cry, better be I'm good. Out. I'm, I'm telling you why. Santa, Santa Claus is coming to town. For those of us that are lost, never had the sound, the music. Of course, you know, Keresi, Macy, or Dunde, or do that is you know that one. You know, any which one is good. So this guy went to his mom's room. I was writing. Oh, Santa Claus, Jesus, I promise to be nice for at least a month. He said, me, month, never. He told it. I promise to be nice for at least a week. Then he knew that he bullied somebody. He always bullied somebody down the road. He said, no, 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 I can't handle it. Okay, I will be nice for at least a day. Then he thought of himself, a day? Huh. It's not possible. He told it. Then looked around his mommy's table and saw the figurine of Mary and grabbed the figurine of Mimi and looked up and said, Jesus, if you want to see your mother again, you better give me a gift this Christmas. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and you know when you're talking about gifts is when you know those who are stingy or not. The day you ask wives to tell you truly how their husbands are, if you promise that you won't tell others, they will tell you the good husbands and the very, very stingy husbands. God must deliver all the stingy husbands in Jesus' mighty name. You know, that was, you know, a, a man and a woman, they went to a car lot, they wanted to buy a car. Uh, the man was looking at a Jeep. He wanted to change his car, uh, you know, an SUV. And the, the wife saw a red Porsche. I was looking at it, but of course couldn't tell the man. Just looking at it, looking at it, looking at the man, looking at it, looking at them. So when they got home, I said, this is Christmas. And I said, darling, don't you think it would be nice for you to give me a gift that, you know, moves from zero to 100 in about four seconds? Hmm. I said, well, okay. That's possible. So the woman was elated. Wow, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. I'm going to get a Porsche from this man. So come Christmas Day, the man wrapped something and the woman of course thought it was the key to the car, only to open it and see a brand new bathroom scale that if the woman stands on it, it moves from zero to hundred under four seconds. God must help us and deliver us from stingy people in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. You know why some of our men are not married now? It's because they are looking for a woman that is born on a leap year. Knowing that a leap year comes every four years, so they can only buy a gift, buy the gift, once in four years. God must deliver us from such men in Jesus' mighty name. Or change them in Jesus' mighty name. They're all around you. Amen? God will uh, deliver us from them in Jesus' mighty name. So men, please go and marry. Amen? You know, so for those of us that are, you know, loving gifts, there's always a longing for Christmas morning. There's always a waiting. For example, if this was your home, you can't open these things until the 25th, until next Sunday. You come here, you sweep, you dust, the lights go on, but you dare not touch it until Christmas morning. So there, there is a, a, a longing. There is a waiting period. There are expectations. 
But you have to wait. And there are three accounts that I want to look at this morning of people in Jerusalem around the first Christmas, first Christmas time. They too had a longing, a waiting. Two of them knew what they were waiting for, a gift. They had expectations. The first person is Simeon in Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 26. Luke 2, 25 to 26. The Bible says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Amen? He was waiting. He had been waiting. He was longing. He had expectations. Because for 400 years before this time, there was no open vision, no prophecy. There was silence. Israel had lost their political power. Everybody was afraid of Herod. Some people have started doubting, is this Messiah really still coming? He was waiting. But you see, God had told him that he will not die until he had seen Jesus. And I pray that some, indeed all of us, we will not see death before we meet Jesus. You just have to meet Jesus. He was waiting. They told him he would not die until he met Jesus. And so, this morning, he came into church you know, God is never late. At the right time, he was in church. But see, the gift he was waiting for was not a material gift like most of us are looking at or wanting or longing for, but a person. And the Bible says, consolation of Israel. The gift he was looking for was comfort. His longing was, ah, I need comfort. Consolation of Israel. And as we approach Christmas, there might be some of us that are still waiting, still longing, still believing God for one thing or the other, struggling. Some of us dread Christmas Day. It's family time. Maybe we're not married yet. We're lonely. How will we go through it? Some go through depression. But they are waiting for a miracle to happen. Well, I prophesy into your life that whatever you are waiting for, as it happened in the life of Simeon, that that which he was longing for happened. So it will happen even before Christmas in Jesus' mighty name. You better say a better amen. People of God, you can imagine what he had been waiting for. And that morning, as he held baby Jesus, he sang a song. I think that's what they use mostly in the Ankan church. And I think they call it Dong Nong Dimitis. It says, now in verse 29 to 32, let's look at it. You know, he, he, he was fulfilled in verse 29 to 32. He says, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. He says, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. My prayer is that your eyes will see the salvation of God. Your eyes will behold the king in Jesus' mighty name. That miracle that you are believing God for, as it happened in the life of this man, it will happen in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. Say, I receive. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are no respecter of persons. I am waiting. I belonging. I have expectations. Father, your word says, my expectation shall not be dashed. Everything that I am believing you for.
this season. Father, let it manifest now in Jesus. Father, they lift up that prayer point. Every expectation will not be dashed. Every longing will be met. Everything that you are believing God for. Oh, pray, pray, pray that God will do it. God is never late. He is always on time. He knows about it. He knows your fears. He knows your fears. He understands. Pray that in a miraculous way, he will make a way. He will do it. There will be manifestations. There will be manifestations. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The second person is a woman. And that woman jumps at us in verse 36 of our text. In Luke chapter 2. Her name is Anna. A widow. And after her husband died, the Bible says that she just stayed in church. She didn't leave church. Always waiting and fasting and praying. And verse 38 reveals to us what she was waiting for. She was waiting for redemption, forgiveness, deliverance of Israel. And you can imagine on that day also as she saw Jesus the person she had been waiting for. The deliverance, the redemption of Israel. Our redemption, the one that God sent to redeem us from the clutches of hell. As she held baby Jesus in her hands she would say that the waiting is over vision fulfilled destiny fulfilled my prayer for somebody here also is that before the end of this month indeed if you are bold before the end of this week you too will be able to shout and say the waiting is over destiny fulfilled so shall it be in Jesus mighty name people of God the third and the last set of people that we're looking at are the shepherds in Luke chapter 2 and verse 8 to 14 Luke 2 8 to 14 and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were very afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people and for unto you is born this day in the city of David I said in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord hallelujah and this shall be a sign you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger 13 and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill towards men praise the head in Jesus mighty name you will become a celebrity in Jesus mighty name. Today, over 2,000 years, we are reading about shepherds, laborers, smelly people. But today, they are being celebrated. Somebody's destiny is going to turn around for the better in Jesus mighty name. The silence over your life is broken. You will go from glory to glory. You will go from testimony to testimony. I say the history of your life is being rewritten. You will be the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. The light of God, the glory of God will arise and shine upon your life, upon your family, upon your endeavors. In the name of Jesus. People of God, these people, they were taking stock they still had some lambs that they had not sold. 
by now, everybody should have sold everything and gone back home. But they still had some lambs not sold. Unfinished business. Yet unanswered prayers. And the Bible says, they were not sleeping. They were watching. Watching by night. They were holding on and waiting. They knew it's not over yet. That's why they were not sleeping. And there must be one or two of us here that know it's not over yet. We are holding on. How many of us know it's not over yet? We are waiting. We are watching. We are not sleeping. It's not over yet until you share your testimony. Yeah. Amen. People have got to look at what the Bible says in Jeremiah 31 and verse 16 in the Amplified Version. Jeremiah 31 and 16 in the Amplified Version. For those of us that are still waiting, it says, Thou says the Lord, restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded. All your prayers, your giving, everything you've gone for God shall be rewarded. I say your work shall be rewarded. God will reward you in Jesus' mighty name. He says, hold on. Ezekiel 36, 11. Ezekiel 36, 11. The Bible says, I will do better for you than at your beginning. So God is going to do better for you this month. Amen? Than all he has done from January in Jesus' mighty name. How many of us believe that it can still happen? I say it will happen in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, it will happen in Jesus' mighty name. Job 8, 7. Job 8, 7 says, even though your beginning was small, your latter end shall greatly increase. It was the end of the year. Everything was running to a close. But these guys were still waiting. They were still watching. And Habakkuk 2, 3, 2, 3, in the Amplified Version says that you will not be disappointed. Amen. Whatever you are believing God for, you will not be disappointed. It will come right on time. Right on time in Jesus' mighty name. People of God. But these guys, they were just waiting. But they didn't know what they were waiting for. Simeon knew he was waiting for comfort. Anna knew he was waiting for forgiveness. For redemption. But these guys just knew... Mm, well, I won't sleep. <laughs> I will still come to church. I will still pray. Something has to happen. They were just waiting. They were longing. But you see, God knew what they needed. And God knows what you need. Matthew 6, 8. Matthew 6, 8 says, Your father knows what you have need of before you even begin to ask him. Before you open your mouth, he knows what you need. That's why he is a father. Your children don't have to come to you and say, Daddy, school is coming. School fees? No, no. You know. And God will just, in a miraculous way, make a way in Jesus' mighty name. God knew that these guys, they didn't know what they were waiting for. But something in their spirit was telling them it's not over. Something would happen. So instead of sleeping, they were watching. People of God. God need, knew that they needed to hear a good news. And for somebody today, God knows you need to hear a good news. I say you need to hear a good news. And you will see that in verse 10 and 12, it was a personal news. He says, I bring you it was personal to them. In verse 12, it says, For unto you, somebody will get good news in Jesus' mighty name. Your ears will hear joy and gladness. I say you will hear joy and gladness. Every bad news will be taken away in Jesus' mighty name. It will not even come near to us in Jesus' mighty name. I bring you unto you good news. 
Look at verse 11. Verse 11. He says, For unto you is born this day the, at the city of David a Savior. That is the best news. The best gift. A Savior. How many of us need a Savior? How many of us need Jesus? He says, Unto you is passed now. Unto you born this day at COD a Savior Christ the Lord. And that is the true meaning and the essence of Christmas. It's a person. It's a gift. I am using this opportunity to thank all those that have given the pastors, the choir, ushers, gifts this period. My prayer is that God will reward you beyond your own expectations in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, it happened suddenly. Isaiah 35 and verse 10. Isaiah 35 and verse 10. It says, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion, which is the city of David, with songs and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. By the time you are coming on Christmas morning, you will come singing and everlasting unending joy shall be upon your heads and you will obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighs shall flee away never to return in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. Say, I receive. People of God, for the shepherds it happened suddenly verse 13 of our scripture the Bible says that suddenly in Luke 2 verse 13 it says suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying people of God Isaiah 48 and verse 3. Isaiah 48 and verse 3. Isaiah 48 says, I have declared the former things from the beginning. And they went forth out of my mouth. And I showed them. I did them suddenly. And they came to pass. God will do something awesome in your life suddenly in Jesus' mighty name. Say a better in. Suddenly darkness turned to light. Darkness turned to light. Suddenly they became celebrities. But you know what beats me is that the heavenly host started singing at the birth of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. You do not celebrate during matriculation. The work was not completed. He was just born. The redemption only comes at the cross. If he did not make it to the cross, there is no celebration. But here you have angels already celebrating. Why? He has not graduated. He was just born. Isaiah 46 and verse 10. Isaiah 46 verse 10 says, God declares the end report from the beginning. He knows how it will end. So he can start celebrating at the beginning. He doesn't have to wait till the end. He knows the whole story of your life. That's why he said, celebrate. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 3.10, it says, Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. He says, celebrate. Don't wait. I declare the end from the beginning. I know how it will end. Look at what the Bible says in Philippians 1.6 in the Amplified Version. Philippians 1.6 in the Amplified Version. It says, and I'm convinced, I'm sure of this, this very thing, that he who began a good
good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ right up to the time of his return developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. All you need to do is just to know it has begun. The good news Christ was born begin to celebrate. Hallelujah. Because he that begun will complete. Amen. Every work that has been done in your life, it will come to fruition in Jesus' mighty name. No more abortion in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be taken away in the midst of your days. The Bible says that my elect will long enjoy the work of your hands. You will see your children's children. Everything you lay your hands to do, it will be perfected. I say it will be perfected. That project will finish. You will marry. You will have children. I say you will have children. You will see your children's children. Because the work has begun. Amen. Celebrate. People of God, as I close, hmm. I want to close with a story. Indeed, I think I can close with two stories. The first one. The story of a cobbler one that makes shoes he just had a feeling that Jesus was going to visit him at Christmas he was an old man and he waited and waited nothing was happening the day was almost coming to an end then an old man visited was poor and as he looked at his feet he saw that there were holes in his shoes he said old man I'll make you some new shoes he made him new shoes and the old man said thank you and left he was still waiting for Jesus to come then an old man came and said I have not eaten for two days He said, come, I'll give you food. Gave her food. And off she went. Then a little boy came in and said, sir, I don't know the way to my home. Please, can you show me? So, well, this guy says, well, since Jesus is not coming, he locked up and showed that boy the way to the home. By the time he was coming back, he said, wow, I'm so disappointed. I had it in my heart that Jesus was coming but he didn't come so he had a whisper that I have come I came as an old man you changed my shoes I came as a woman I was hungry you gave me food I came as a little boy you showed me the way you know this season if Jesus came Many of us will miss him. I pray not. The Bible says in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. We don't have time to read it. You know about it. He says, <laughs> I was hungry. You didn't feed me. I was in prison. You didn't visit me. I was dejected. You didn't do anything. And people will ask, where who can see Jesus in prison and not visit? Who can see Jesus hungry and not feed? And that scripture says, in as much as you do not do it to the least of this, you have not done it to me. This season there will be a lot of people around us. A lot of needy people. You know, I had a story about our dialysis patients at the healing stripes from the doctor last week. You know, many of them are dying just because they could not afford. Times are hard. 
25,000 naira subsidized. Outside is 35. Even the 25, they couldn't afford. And she gave me an account of many people, many people that you see, they just could not afford. We've been giving free dialysis, but only about 40 people in this church are consistent. Out of over 2,000, 4,000. Some people are dying just because they cannot continue on that machine. And I said, give me my own patient. I will make sure that this patient lives. 100,000 a month, I will do it. And I know that there will be other people that, you know, will join in. So I told her, maybe next week or sometime, she needs to come and share this. We did so much. My prayer is that when he comes, as he has come, you will not miss him in Jesus' mighty name. Last story is about a rich man, an art collector. He had a son, and they used to collect very expensive work of art, Picasso, Van Gogh. And in the morning, he and his son would sit down in the sitting room and be, you know, looking at those pieces of art, appreciated it. Then there was a battle. And the son was conscripted. He had to go to battle. Lo and behold, he got news sometime that the son had died at war. He became dejected. He could no longer go to the sitting room and talk and discuss and appreciate the work of art. Everything became dowdy. For months, he was dejected. Then one morning, he got a knock on the door. And somebody came with a gift in his hand. He said, look, sir, I was a colleague of your son. It was because your son was trying to save me that he got hit by the bullet. He says, I drew a painting of your son because I'm an artist. And I think this is the best gift I can give you this Christmas. So he gave the man, the painting of the sun. The man was so happy, elated. He hung the painting among all the other expensive artwork. And then life came back. Every morning he would sit down looking at the face of his son and appreciating that painting. After some years, he died. And he said in his will that he needed to auction all the artwork. So they sent news all over. And this very rich man that was a collector is going to auction all his artwork. Picasso, Van Gogh, they just mentioned all of them. So that day, in his city room, everybody was there. Those that wanted to buy. Rich people. And the auctioneer came and said that the way we're going to do it, we're going to auction this painting, the face of the sun first. They protested. No, no, no. It's a worthless piece of art. Who drew it? We don't know him. I want the Van Gogh. The Va no. He said, no. The instruction is that we must auction this one first. So, all the big guys fold their hands. $1,000, $2,000, nobody answered. Then there was a neighbor there. And the man said, $20. I said, I'll take him. I knew him. He was a very good boy. Going, going, gone. Take the painting for $20. And the others said, okay, now let's start the real auction. The auctioneer said, no. The auction is over. What do you mean the auction is over? So the will says, whoever gets the son gets everything. The auction is over. The reason for this season is the son. Whoever buys the son or gets the son gets everything that you are running up and down for. Just get the sun.
That's the best gift. Better than material gift. That is the perfect gift. And that is the true meaning of Christmas. He's priceless. Never outdated. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. If you bought rice, if they gave you hamper, by next year, by January, February, it's useless. But this gift is a precious gift. Never out of fashion. Today, I present to you the true meaning of Christmas. Not a material gift, but our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Our Savior, our Deliverer, our Healer, our Sustainer, our Comforter, our Strong Deliverer, our Shield, our Supporter, our Savior. And my prayer is that today, as you make and lay claim to the Son, every other thing will be sorted out even before the end of the year in Jesus' mighty name. As all eyes are closed. Are you here? It's a free gift. But not many people are laying claim to this gift. It's the best gift. It's the perfect gift. The true meaning of the season. You want prosperity? Yes. You want to marry? Yes. You want healing? Yes. But all of these are in the sun. And today, the sun is reaching out to you. I don't know what your longing is this season. But why don't you just claim this gift? It's reaching out to you. Are you here? You've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. It's past now. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if you claim or accept this gift, this free gift, then your story will change to Christ in me, the hope of glory. Everything you have lost will be restored. Everything that you are waiting for, longing for, will be given unto you on a platter of gold. So if you are here, You have not accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. You have not taken a public altar call. Then you will miss the reason for this season. Or if you are here, you gave your life to Jesus Christ before and you fell back into sin. You can come back home. So those two categories of people I want you to please lift up your hands. You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's all you need to do. It's a gift. It's a gift. Once you accept him, wait and see what God will do in your life. Anybody? Anybody? Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands if you're here. Thank you, my brother. Just come, 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 come. Let's clap for Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just, just come. Just come. Accept him. Accept the son. And every other thing will come into place. I don't know what's going on in your life, what struggles you have. The secret is accept the son. Like that man that bought the painting. Just one painting. And every other thing will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added. Let's clap, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap. Anybody else? Anybody else? This is the best gift that you can have this season. This is the best gift. Never outdated. This is a package. This is the last call. We need to stop right now. Anybody else? Are you coming? If you are coming, you need to come right now. If you are upstairs, you need to come. Jesus is calling you. You need to come. Just come. If you are coming, the rest of us, let's stretch forth our hands towards this ones. And just begin to pray for them. 
Let us pray that as they have accepted Jesus Christ as your pastor Lord and Savior, that God will not turn them back. Let us pray that every prayer request that they have will be turned to mighty testimonies. That He will forgive them their sins. He will comfort them. He will write their name in the book of life. And they will be brand new. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus, from right now, I accept you as the Lord of my life. Change my life. Change my heart. Write my name in the book of life and make me brand new. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to go with my brother. They will have some gifts for you. Please go with him. We have some gifts for you. Okay? Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus as they go. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now that we know the real meaning of Christmas, it's all about a gift, and the gift is the song. I think we can now sing a song and have a merry little Christmas. Amen. So, as you eat and all that, let's be deliberate and know that the reason is our Lord and Master. Jesus Christ, the Savior. And I pray that every one of us will hear good news in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. And as they sing this song, we'll just um, shake hands with at least, you know, maybe five, six, possibly seven people, and just wish ourselves well. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, your troubles will be out of sight. So, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, your troubles will be miles away. dear to us gather near to us once more so through the years we all will be together as the Lord allows anger shine